In this video, I will show you a very simple way how you can compute the number of electrons and also atoms in a coin of pure copper. We do this because copper is one of the most important materials in electronics and you should know at least some basic properties of it. In order to do so, I will show you how to use the table of elements properly to find out the atomic mass of an element. Also, I will explain to you what the unit mole is all about and also the Avogadro constant, which are the tools you will need to solve these small exercises here. My name is Andreas from the Fearless Engineer and here we go. Now, before we start with the actual example, let's first discuss the motivation, why it makes sense for us to do this, why it makes sense for us to invest time to closely looking at copper and a copper coin. Well, copper is one of the most important elements which we have in electronics because it's used um, as a primary conductor in most devices. It's used for cabling, it's used on PCBs, and it has many, many other uh, applications. And also, it's much, much cheaper than, for example, silver, which makes it also very attractive from a pricing point of view. And this is why we want to investigate at least some of uh, the properties of copper. And the approach which we want to follow here in this video is um, consists of three major steps. First, we want to determine the atomic mass using the periodic table of elements. And then secondly, we want to use this atomic mass and also something called the Avogadro constant to determine the number of atoms within the desired amount of the, uh, of, of the element copper, which we want to look at. For example, um, the weight of the copper coin we are talking about here. And lastly, in the third step, we want to find the number of electrons uh, in the coin by using the number of protons which we can extract from the table of elements and also from the total number of atoms which we computed in step two. And that's it. So let's go. Okay, now let's start with the first step here. And this is to determine the atomic mass by using the table of elements, which you can see here, or at least a small, um, a small extract from, from the full table, which you can find on Wikipedia or just Google a version to your liking. There are plenty of versions available for free on the internet. Now let's look at copper, which is contained within the red circle here. And if you look closely, uh, you find several numbers, two of which are important to us. The 29 here is the number of protons in the core. And this is also the ordering key by which all the elements are arranged in the table of elements. But this is something we will get back to a little later in this video. But first, let's look at this number here, 63.546. This is the atomic weight of copper. And the unit of this atomic weight, it's abbreviated with, by, by using the letter small, a small u. And the unit of this atomic weight is given in something called grams per mole. And the idea behind this is to relate copper and every other element to a certain reference element, which is hydrogen. And in order to do so, uh, we need to make use of Avogadro's constant or Avogadro's number. And the idea behind this is actually quite simple. What Avogadro did way back in his time is he counted the number of hydrogen atoms in one gram of hydrogen. He took one gram, he counted the number, and he arrived at this number here, 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23. And by using this atomic weight here, we can always relate to this reference element. So we know that 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 hydrogen atoms, they weigh one gram. And by using this number, we now know that the same number of copper atoms weighs 63.546 grams. So copper is 63.546 times heavier than hydrogen. And we can do the exact same thing for every other element, for example, aluminum. And by looking at the atomic weight of aluminum, for example, which is roughly 27, we can easily tell that it's 27 times heavier than hydrogen and half as heavy as, um, as copper, for example. So it's a very easy way to compare elements among each other. And now in the second step, we will be using this atomic mass and also Avogadro's constant to determine the number of atoms which exist in the de desired amount of the element, in our case, copper. And in part A, we will now be computing the number of atoms per gram, the number of copper atoms per gram of copper. And we will abbreviate uh, this uh, by using the, uh, the, the variable Na. And this means it's uh, refer referring to one gram of the material. Now, this is Avogadro's number. We divide it by the atomic mass. And what we get is the number of co copper atoms in one gram 
of copper. And in step B, what we can do now is, since we know the number of um, copper atoms in one gram, we can easily um, transfer this result to 2.5 grams of copper, which is the mass of our coin. So the number of copper atoms within our coin, which weighs 2.5 grams, is 2.369 times 10 to the power of 22. And in the next step, we want to find the number of electrons. Now that we know how many atoms there are, we want to know how many electrons all the atoms contain. And in order to get to this number, we need to look again into the periodic table of elements, which you can see here. And as I told you before, the number in the upper left is the number of protons in the core. And as we have seen in the last video on the structure of atoms, we can easily tell that for an uncharged atom, we have the exact same number of electrons than protons. And since we know that we have 29 protons in the core of a copper atom, we can now tell that there are also 29 electrons on the orbits surrounding the copper core. And this means that we only have to multiply the number of atoms in our coin by the number of electrons of one atom. And this is how we arrive at this number here, 6.87 times 10 to the power of 23 electrons within a copper coin with a weight of 2.5 grams, which is the result of this small exercise here. Let's quickly summarize the main points from this video here. You have seen how you can use the table of elements to extract some information about, let's say, copper or aluminum, which is something which we'll also do in an upcoming video. And you can extract the number of protons in the core, which, by the way, is the sorting key for, uh, after which the table of elements is built. And you also know uh, how to where to find the atomic mass and what the atomic mass actually is. We have also seen the Avogadro constant, which is a very easy and convenient way to relate various elements to each other using one particular element as a reference. And by using the knowledge from this video, you can take basically any element from the table of elements and compute the number of atoms and also electrons um, in a certain mass of this, of this uh, material. I, I hope you found the video enjoyable. Also, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to drop me a comment down below and I'll get back to you with an answer. I hope you have a nice day. See you next time here on The Fearless Engineer.